Thank you for your applause for my tambourine playing. How about some for Joni? <laughs> I'm kidding, as far as you know. Um, good morning. Okay. What? Okay, okay. Um, welcome to Emmaus Lutheran Church in Orange City, Florida. I'm Pastor Mark Winkler, and uh, it is Sunday, August 8th. And I'm saying that in part for the, the people. Is anybody watching this live on your on Facebook right now? I don't know. Sometimes people watch live while they're watching live. What? You're here. You're here. I'm I'm in 3D HD, right? So welcome to worship here. If you're a first timer, we have um, a handmade wooden cross that we want to send home with you, and also we want to extend the welcome to all of you to join us for communion. You don't have to be a member at Emmaus. You don't have to be Lutheran. Um, this is God at work. I'm up here saying the words and waving my arms, but this truly is God's gift to us. So um, everybody is welcome to come for communion this morning. And you should have received a little baggie with the host, the body of Christ in it. It's already been consecrated. And that will be... Um, enough for you to experience Christ if if that's what you would like to do. But you're also going to be invited to come forward at the communion part of the worship service if you would like to participate in the blood of Christ also. So you're going to come forward um, at the direction of our usher and uh, we'll probably do one side first and after completing one side we'll do the other side. So just come forward. Uh, I'll put the I'll put the cup in the, on this tray and you'll receive the cup and then put, drink it, and then put the cup in a, um, in a disposal container. And uh, so that's how that goes. The, the white in the tray is grape juice. If you want grape juice instead of, of wine, let me know at the time that you come forward. I forgot my cross this morning. Oh, well. And uh, so anyway, everybody is welcome. We uh, brought back after a long respite of our um, seven o'clock um, outdoor worship service, our long respite of one week. We, we canceled it for one week. And then we, were, we went back to it last night and we met in the portico. And so we were under the, under the, the roof here which was good because it rained through most of the service. And that's how we're gonna be doing it from now on. And I, I think I wasn't exactly clear in my email blast on Wednesday when I said that we were gonna go back to the outdoor worship service. Um, we're not meeting, we're not si sitting in our cars, I'm not broadcasting over the FM radio, at least not until that's necessary again, if it ever is. And, um, and so bring lawn chairs if you want to sit outside and be comfortable. Otherwise, we're still going to be sitting outside, but you'll be sitting in a metal chair or, um, or perhaps a, a padded chair from the, um, from the fellowship hall. Anyway, that's how that's going to go. You want to worship together? I do. Let's do that. So the um, service begins this morning with the prayer at the baptismal font. If you're able to stand, I invite you to rise. Holy and precious God, we give you thanks for every good gift that comes from your hand of mercy. We give you thanks for the gift of life. We give you thanks that we hunger for life and that we experience your gift of life in so many ways. We ask you, God, to renew in us the hunger for life that we will experience during worship today. Help us to... Uh, be mindful of all that you do to fill us with your goodness throughout our lives. We ask, God, that you would send your Holy Spirit upon this baptismal water um, that came right out of the faucet, but by your holiness, make the water holy and make our lives holy, our community and our world all holy through the gifts that you give. We pray that the brokenness of the world might be healed and restored by your love. We ask that you would use us in whatever way you would use us this week to be, um, to be conduits of 
your love and your grace and your mercy and your goodness to all people. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to have a seat, and instead of singing right now, we're going to sing as soon as we can, but we will um, have a musical meditation. Those who are able to stand, I invite you to rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Saint John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And together let us read. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Then the Jew of the sea, they said to him, Where did you come from? Just can can I get you to stop? Uh, I don't know what happened. That's what was there. <laughs>
us again. Let us read together. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said... It's not... It's not progressing. Sorry. Okay. How about just listening? Okay. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? You, you can read again if you want. Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and you have about 18 minutes to, to see if you can get that going. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let the people of God say together, amen. amen. So Jesus has said some pretty audacious things. He said that he came out of the sky, down from heaven, out of the sky, he said to the people, you will live forever, and he's also said to them, you will never be hungry again. How many of you could eat something right now? Yeah, probably most of you, even, even some of you who didn't have your hand up. As we get hungry, last week I taught you about loving sausage for breakfast, right? Because my, my grandpa taught me how to say, wir haben Leberwurst for Frühstück, which is we're having liverwurst for breakfast. But I went down and said to my dad, who grew up speaking German, wir haben Leberwurst. Wir haben Leberwurst. We have a German right here with us. Wir haben Leberwurst für Frühstück. And he laughed and laughed. Yeah, he still brings it up from time to time. I'm 61 years old. Go ahead. I do love my Wurst. Yeah. We get hungry in the morning, and so we break our nighttime fast with breakfast, and then we get hungry again midday, and we have lunch, and then we get hungry later in the day, and we have dinner. And it's a cycle that repeats over and over again. How can Jesus say, you'll never be hungry again, when I know for a fact that I'm going to be hungry? Oh, I could eat now. I could eat now. Mm -hmm. And... And that will never die. Jesus says we'll never die. In human experience, that's not, that's not what we know. That's not what we know. We know something different. That people live for a while, sometimes for a long while, and then we die. Yeah. And then Jesus has said also, I came out of the sky. I came down from heaven. You know, and, and the people are grumbling. They're complaining. You know what they're grumbling and complaining about? Not that Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, you have to eat my body, you have to drink my blood. You know what they're upset about? They're upset about the fact that he came out of the, that he said he came out of the sky. He came down from heaven. And they start grumbling and complaining to each other in some of the words that you probably didn't read along with me, but they said is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I've come down from heaven? How, 
How can Jesus say he came down from heaven, came out of the sky when we saw, his, we know his parents, Mary and Joseph, and we saw him playing in the streets of, of Nazareth as a child, and, and we, knew, we knew this kid when he was a kid. How can he say he came down from heaven out of the sky? That's what they're grumbling about. But the grumbling of the Jews didn't start with this experience between Jesus and these people who, who came to him. It started back, well, a long, long time ago, long time ago. Um, back, remember, and I brought it up last week and I didn't finish my point because I forgot it. That's what happens when there's no notes. And um, Exodus chapter 3, and God talks to Moses from a burning bush that's not consumed. How interesting. So Moses finds this very interesting. He goes over to the burning bush and he hears God say, Moses, take off your shoes, your sandals, because you're standing on holy ground. So he takes off his sandals and then he listens to God speaking to him from the from the burning bush and, and God says to him, go back to Egypt, Moses, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And he was not excited about doing that. He says, mm, no, I, I don't wanna go, I'm not a good speaker. And God says, we'll let, we'll let Aaron handle the speaking, but you just wave the staff around and and when I tell you to, you're going to use that staff to bring plagues on the people of Israel. I'm paraphrasing a little. And Moses says, this is the part that I forgot last week. Moses said, if the people ask, if Pharaoh asks who sent me, what should I say? And God says, I am who I am. I am. That's the divine name of God. I am. The divine name of God, I am. It's carried into the New Testament too. In Greek, it's ego eimi, I am. And Jesus has given himself the divine name of God. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus has given himself God's name. He's put himself at the center of the story here. He, the people know that faithfulness comes from obedience to God and obedience to the law that God gave to the people. The law was a gift to the people. And Jesus took, took himself and he set himself right in the middle of the importance of obeying God. And, and he said he came out of the sky. And he said they'll never be hungry again. He said they'll never die. Yeah. Grumbling usually leads to something. In today's parlance, I think we say the squeaky wheel, wheel gets the grease. Yeah. Well, the, the ancient Jews, the ancient Hebrews, they're... They're complainers, and they were complaining to God, and they were complaining about Moses, and they were saying, you let us out into the wilderness to die here. We have no food. We have no water for our children. You should have left us back in Egypt where, sure, we were, we, we were slaves, but we were fed. And now we're out here and we're not slaves. That's great, but we don't have any food. We're gonna die out here. And so Moses took their complaints to God and God sent manna, which was bread from above every morning. It settled like dew on the ground. I'm not sure what they did with it exactly, whether they gathered it up and maybe packed it into balls. Like, I'm thinking it looks like a snowball or something. And then maybe they just ate it like that. Or maybe they baked it. I don't know. We don't know. I mean, it's all guesswork here. Um, and God sent quail for them to eat. They didn't have any water. And Moses got angry. And he took that staff that God had given to him and said, and, and told Moses to wave that staff around and bring the plagues on them. And, and Moses took that same staff 
the same staff that he used to part the waters of the Red Sea for the people to walk through in safety. And he took that staff and he smacked it on a rock, trying to get water out of the rock, which we know can't happen. And so water came out of the rock and the people had water. But later Moses was punished for that, for lacking trust in God. Moses was punished in this way. He was brought right up to the point of being able to see the land of promise, but he wasn't allowed to go into it. Yeah. There's a psalm. Psalm, you know, I think I marked it. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 12, 34, verse 8. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The people of ancient Hebrew times tasted the goodness of the Lord, the, the manna from above. And now the people in Jesus' time, they want something substantial because they're hungry. And Jesus doesn't want them to be hungry for bread from above like Moses, they, they claim Moses gave to them, but Jesus refutes that and he says, Moses didn't give it to him, God did. My father gave that. Jesus doesn't want them to be hungry for food. He wants them to be hungry for, any, can anybody guess? Hungry for Come on. Hungry for life. There we go. There's a clue. It's right there. <laughs> hungry for life. Yeah. Hungry for life. Jesus wants them to be hungry for life, not just food. I mean, Jesus knows that we're going to get hungry at least three times during the day, whether we feed ourselves, whether we have the means to feed ourselves or not. We're going to get hungry like that. But Jesus wants them to be hungry for life. And maybe this is what he's talking about when he says, you'll never be hungry again. Because once we come to Jesus and we are fed spiritually, we are not hungry spiritually anymore. Because we don't need to look anywhere else to, be, to, be, to, to find spiritual food. Later on in the same chapter of John's Gospel, in just a couple more weeks, we're going to hear the words of Peter when Jesus says, what about you disciples? Do you want to turn away with the others who turned away? And Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The eternal life, eternal zoe, that's the Greek word, zoe. Eternal life. Jesus wants them to be hungry for life and he wants them to be hungry for what Jesus offers to them because once they have Jesus and once they have what Jesus offers, then their spiritual needs are fulfilled. There you go. Jesus wants them to be hungry for Zoe, eternal life. But eternal life isn't isn't what we receive when we stop breathing and our heart stops beating. Eternal life is about the abundance of God in the here and the now. That's what, that's what everlasting life is. It's an abundance that doesn't end. I start every sermon with a quote from uh, Psalm 106, verse 48, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting. I mean, if we could put this on a continuum, we could, we could say, well, it's going to start over there. But it starts in everlasting. It, there's not a starting place. From everlasting to everlasting, and it's not going to end. So this is about the everlasting life that Jesus is offering to these Jewish people gathered around him wanting food. And he says, the spiritual food that I offer. That's not what he says. If he did, it would have been all cleared up. And I, I don't think he would have lost so many followers. But he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. You came out of heaven, right? We knew, you. we knew your parents. We knew you. That's what they had trouble with. 
Now, when he gave himself the divine name, he, he put his finger right on <coughs> an intense, intensely difficult um, theme of faith at that time that continues to be an intensely um, necessary and difficult theme of our faith. Two essential elements for believing in Jesus Christ that are intimately connected with each other and yet impossibly, um, impossibly opposite from each other. They're incompatible and yet connected. Jesus Christ is fully God. That's the first thing they're having trouble with. You say you came down from heaven, you came out of the sky, you give yourself God's divine name, I am, and we know that you had parents, Mary and Joseph. We know those things, and you're telling us these things. Jesus, as we know through the scriptures, is the Son of God given for the life of the world, sent to be the redeemer of the world, sent to be the one who, who, who sets people free, not necessarily people being set free from governments, but set free from themselves, set free from their own sins, from their own guilt, from their own shame. Jesus, being God himself, can take away our sins, the Bible says, who, who but God could take away sins? Hmm? Jesus can, because he's God. So here's one aspect of our faith in Jesus Christ, that Jesus is fully God. Here's the other absolutely essential part of believing in Jesus, which is absolutely incompatible with Jesus is fully God. Jesus is fully man. And he has to be. Jesus had to be fully human so that he would understand the stuff that we go through day in and day out. Jesus ex experienced the whole range of human emotion. He got tired, he got frustrated, he got angry, he got sad. He, he got hungry, if I didn't say that already. He, he and he died a human death, a painful, tragic, humiliating human death. And when he took his last breath on the cross and he said, um, Father, I commend my spirit to you, and, and the spirit of Jesus left him, he showed us his humanity in dying that imperfect human death. He had to be human to take our human sins away from us. Otherwise, otherwise, I don't think we could even believe it. Jesus, fully God, fully human, essential for us to hold on to. I can't really do any better job of explaining it. It's one of those parts of the mystery of faith that we just know that we just, that we just, accept. Because there's not a good way to put it into human words. So Jesus, he encounters grumbling, complaining people before him. I think he's, the words that he says here, I think he's trying to help them. But he further confuses them. I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Here, this is going to bring it home. The very last verse of our gospel reading for today, Jesus says, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Now John is the only writer in the whole New Testament that talks about eating Jesus' flesh. I mean, others will record that Jesus said, um, um, 
he broke the bread, he gave thanks, and he gave it for his disciples, and he said to them, take and eat, this is my body. Soma, that's the word for body. John is the only one who uses the word sarx, which is flesh. John is also the only one who uses the word world, cosmos, to mean essentially that which is opposed to God. Okay. So listen, whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give for the life, the zoe of the world, the cosmos, is my flesh, sarks, okay, none. The people that were there with Jesus were Jews and so was Jesus. So when they talk about the Jews that were hungry and that asked for manna and were fed by manna and, and Jesus says, your ancestors ate this bread from heaven, and they died, they're not just, these are not just the ancestors of those people, they're Jesus' ancestors too. And when Jesus says, the, the, whoever eats of this bread will live forever, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh, they would have heard that and understood that Jesus' gift was for the Israelites, because they're part of the world, but so are all the other nations. I don't know that they, I don't know that they were ready to hear that other people could be chosen by God to receive something so precious as the gift of everlasting life. But that's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying he came for everlasting life, eternal life, abundant life, fulfilled life for the Jews and for everyone, which is good because the everyone else is us. Yeah. Jesus wants us then to be hungry for life, not just hungry for lunch in another hour and a half, but hungry for what he offers to each of us, which is a spiritual gift <coughs> that comes to us and changes <coughs> our lives and fills us up with a spiritual awakening that we don't get anywhere else. Come and, and uh, well, you don't have to come forward for the communion wine, but let us join together in this feast and this meal of Jesus his body to eat for you, to eat. And let us receive the promise of everlasting life, eternal life, abundant life, fulfilled life, spiritual life that Jesus is offering to you today. Amen. Those who are able to stand, I invite you to rise. Let us confess our sins and receive forgiveness from God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. Please take a moment for silent reflection. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from, a, from heaven, you are fed and you are nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. I invite you to, seat, to, to be seated for musical meditation.
the congregation is invited to stand as you are able. Let us join in confessing together our most holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in our loving and almighty God, who abundantly provides the bread of life to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. O oh God, build up your church throughout the world. Teach it to share the living bread from heaven that you provide so that all are fed. Make us examples of generosity as we reach out helping hands to the needy in our community. Lord, in your mercy. creation. Creator God, send rain and sun at the right time and in the perfect amount so that fields and grains and fields of flowers thrive. Provide clean water for people and animals alike. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all, draw the nations of the world to harmony and mutual understanding. Bind all of humanity in the unity of love and peace that comes through the Spirit. Keep safe our service women and men. Help them to know that they are not forgotten or taken for granted. Bring them home to loving families and grateful communities. Lord, in your mercy. Saving God, sustain all whose journey feels too hard to bear. Restore the hope of all who live in despair. Comfort those who are poor, oppressed, persecuted, or homeless. Heal the sick and comfort the grieving. Lord, in your mercy. Make us a new creation. Father God, bless those who come to worship, our members and our guests, and fill them with the good news of your saving love. Bless those who are worshiping on their computers or other devices. Make your word come alive for one and all. Lord, in your mercy. Make us a new creation. Eternal God, keep us in communion with our ancestors in the faith until we are raised up on the last day to join them at the table of the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, loving and gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you to have ready your um, the body of Christ, the wafer that's in the in the plastic bag you received. If you did not receive this, put your hand up right now, and we'll take care of that. Okay. We will be participating, partaking of the body of Christ all together at the same time after we pray the Lord's Prayer together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. I would invite the congregation to be seated, but then follow the directions of our usher, Ken, and uh, all are invited to come and participate in the blood of Christ. Please let me know if you would like to have the grape juice.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The blessing of God who provides for our needs, who feeds us abundantly, and who journeys with us, with us throughout our lives. Now fill us with great joy in all believing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.